All right, lesson 9-2 is about a specific kind of pattern called an arithmetic sequence. Um, so what do you think we're going to have to do in this pattern? Well, arithmetic means add or subtract. So that's what we'll be doing. So we're going to answer the question, what makes a sequence arithmetic? We're going to define and identify arithmetic sequences and then apply them. So vocab. An arithmetic sequence is a sequence where the difference between consecutive terms is constant. So you're going to have to um, add or subtract between each term, and it should be the same every time in order to be arithmetic. The difference is called the common difference. Um, that's specifically in between them. The arithmetic mean, or average, of two numbers, x and y, is x plus y divided by 2. So just means average, same thing, mean, average. Okay. So is this sequence an arithmetic sequence? So we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Well, I said on the previous slide that in order for a sequence to be arithmetic, you have to have a common difference, so something you add or subtract between each one. So from 3 to 6, you add 3. 6 to 9, you add 3. 9 to 12, you add 3. 12 to 15, you add 3. So if we're adding 3 each time, then it is constant. Our common difference is 3, and it is an arithmetic sequence. This one, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Okay, so let's find the difference between each one. From 1 to 4 is 3. From 3 to 4 is 5. From 9 to 16, did I say that right? I don't know. From 9 to 16 is 7. From 16 to 25 is 9. So we have a difference, and it does make a pattern, but those numbers are not the same each time. So even though it's a pattern, it is not arithmetic. All right. Um, what is the 100th term of the arithmetic sequence that begins 611? So they're telling you specifically that this term is 611, and it is arithmetic. So that means we're going to be adding the same amount each time. So let's ask ourselves, what is our common difference? Well, what's the difference between 6 and 11? It's 5. Okay, we also have this handy dandy formula. So a sub n, which means to find any term, is a sub 1, your first term, plus whatever number term you're looking for, minus 1, times your common difference. So if we're looking for the 100th term, our first term is 6, the term we're looking for is 100, and our common difference is 5. You just put each one of those in, and then you simplify. So 99 times 5 plus 6 is 501. So our, our 100th term in this sequence would be 501. Um, what are the second and the third terms of this arithmetic sequence? 100 something something 82. Now for this one, um, we have a term. We have our first term, and we have our fourth term. But we don't know what our difference is. But we do know that there are... We don't know specifically what the difference is, but we know there are one, two, three common differences between 100 and 82. So we can rewrite this as our fourth term is 82 equals 100 plus three differences. We don't know what the difference is, but then we can just solve for D. So subtract 100 from both sides, divide by 3 and you get d is negative 6. So that means from one term to the next one, we subtract 6. So 100 minus 6 is 94. 94 minus 6 is 88. And 88 minus 6 is 82. So that's how we find this one. All right, for arithmetic mean, it's just finding the one in between. So you add up the two numbers around it and divide by 2, finding the average in between. So this one's 37. Really easy. And for our last one, we're going to use an explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. Um, there's a sports arena um, where the number of seats in the first 13 rows of a section in an arena form an arithmetic sequence. So they add a certain number of seats for every row. Rows 1 and 2 are shown, so row 1 has 14 seats, row 2 has 16 seats. How many seats are in row 13? So we're looking at the 13th row. Um, we know in row 1 that there are 14 seats. We can find our common difference from by taking 16 minus 14. So our common difference is 2, and just putting that into our formula. So 
so our common difference is 2. We put that into our formula. So we're looking at the 13 row. So a sub 13 equals a sub 1 is 14 plus, uh, we're looking for 13 minus 1 times, our common difference is 2. Plug all those things in. Uh, let's see, 13 minus 1 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 14 plus 24 is 38. So in the 13th row, there should be 38 seats. All right, um, here's your lesson check. I want you to do this with your partner, and then, um, then you can work on your worksheet for the day. And don't forget to do your homework, which is lesson 9-2 on Math Excel. All right, guys, see you later.